I'm going to show you how to take a video and using the free version of DaVinci Resolve um, 16.2, I believe is the version I have. Yes, 16.2. How to take that and do a, the, the first part of a motion analysis. In the case where you have, as you usually have, a camera that's moving around with a handheld camera, and but the less usual case where you have very good reference objects in frame. So what we'll do essentially is use the reference objects to stabilize the frame. Although we won't actually stabilize the frame, we'll just stabilize a, a an object in the frame. And then we will track the object moving and the difference is how much motion you're actually getting. Now this, mo this object is a very tiny object and it is very intermittent. It only comes on for a, two or three frames at a time then goes off. So it's hard to find. And I will spare you all the zooming and penning and, and scrolling that I had to do to find this thing. But it is there and you can find it. What I found helpful was to initially enhance it to, to bring out the contrast with with this very fuzzy white thing, very, very tiny, and the background sky. Let's look at the, the very brief footage, the raw footage first. So there, here it is in the media tab, and I'll just play it for you. I don't know if you can see it at all. I, I cannot see it uh, at, at this zoom level. It's, it's there, it's near the middle of the frame, and it, it doesn't appear in every frame. Okay, that's what that looks like. So I'll start from the beginning, I'll go and I've created a t new timeline with just the clip, and I've muted the audio, just it's, it's not important at this point. And now I'm going to go over to the color tab. And I've created two nodes here. One is to subtract out the background a little bit, increase the contrast of the object. And the, the other one is a sizing node. They're, they're both disabled right now. Um, if I enable the sizing node, you'll see that I've zoomed in a bit and tilted. And if I have, I'm also going to have this node here, which is a, a node for increasing the contrast just a little bit with the background. And I happen to know that the object is in this frame. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Let's zoom in a little more and you can, you'll be able to see it. It's right here, right this little tiny dot. Not much there, is it? So we want to now what I've done is I've I've played around with the curves a little bit to try to make it stand out a bit more. There, it's starting, starting to come in better. And you can adjust the curves to make it stand out against the, the, the blue sky. However, it's going to also, that's going to bring the clouds up. So maybe that's not what you want to do. You can, uh, you can play around with this a little bit. This is just the, the all the curves together. I like to just experiment and see what I'm getting. And I just want to bring that dot up to the brightest I can against the background. Maybe play it with the gain a little bit. And just uh, maybe the contrast and move things around. There 
Now that's got it pretty bright, but it's also brought up. Close. Now the colors, of course, are at this point not at all natural colors. That's fine. We just want to locate the dot. We don't care what the colors are at this point. It's just a white dot. So that's good enough. And I'm going to go to my sizing node. And I don't want to actually zoom in too much because the reference objects that I'm going to use are those palm trees at the bottom of the frame. So I go to my zoom. I'm going to zoom out. And let's see. Yeah, I want those palm trees down there. I, the, the fact that their colors are a little weird is, is okay because the contrast is really good with their background. And it's the contrast we're going to use. So there's our little dot. Now, what we want to do is find the first time this dot appears in the, in the clip. So we will just step back and see if we can find it any earlier time. It might not be quite as clear. It might be a little fuzzier, a little... You can zoom in as much as you want using the scroll wheel on your mouse and just Use the arrow key to, t to tap back through the frames. See if you can find any earlier incident. I, I couldn't find it. So I think that one second and the 16th frame. Well, a little hint of something there, but I don't think it's real is the first time we see it. And let's go there. There it is. Then it disappears in the next frame and appears again in the next frame and stays for and fades a little bit and then is gone. So it's there for three out of four frames. Okay, that's our first frame. Now what we want to do is go to our timeline and we're going to make this a fusion node <clears throat> that bakes in the color changes we've made so we can see eas more easily what we're doing. So I'm going to say new fusion clip and now I have a fusion clip. You see the colors are baked in and I'm going over to the fusion page which is this magic wand here now on the Fusion page, you'll notice she'll have a uh, Media In node. And I'm going to make that appear over here on the left. And then we have the Media Out. Right now, nothing's going on between them, so they're identical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tracker on. And then I'm going to put a small ellipse around the first instance where that object appears and then I'm just going to let that track and I'm going to use these palm trees as the reference object so I'm going to ask the tracker to track the palm trees. They are in every frame of the clip and they are they have excellent contrast. So first thing I do is I create a tracker. I'm going to say add tool tracking Tracker. Just the basic classic tracker. Nothing fancy. Now, you notice it appears up here. And I'm going to, I've clicked on tracker. I'm going to move it down and make it bigger so that it covers the palm trees. There's an inner square, which is the actual tracking, tracked object. And then there's the outer one, which is the search box. So the search box obviously should be bigger than the object it's tracking. And then I'm going to put it, put this over the palm trees. And I want to make sure it covers the edges because 
that's where a lot of good contrast is. And go down a little bit. There we go. And then move it down right there. So now we have all these lovely edges that'll have very good contrast. Okay, so I'm just going to have it track. We start at the very beginning over in zero. And I'm going to not do anything fancy up here in the tracking inspector. Everything, all the defaults pretty much work pretty well for such a such an object as this. It it uh, let's see, right? Let's get it centered. Okay. Now I'm just going to say track forward from current time, or you can say track forward. Track forward from current time is fine, and you just let it track. Now this takes a little while, even for a short clip like this. You can see it's following the palm trees very nicely. Now over here, it looks like it's not following them, but actually it is. That's the, the media in node. Yes, he's tracking them beautifully. And this will continue. And on the other side, we'll, we'll see how well it tracks them. And what we're going to use the tracker for is to match that movement to a small circle, which will be around the initial position of the object in the frame. OK, the render is complete. It rendered the entire clip. Now you see all these little white lines. Those are what they're called keyframes. That the tracker created a frame for every frame in the video. It created a, a track point. Now, what we're going to do is tell the tracker that its job is something called match move. So we switch over here to the operation and we say match move foreground over background. Again, all the defaults pretty much work. Um, you only have to mess with this stuff if you know exactly what you're doing and, and you want to uh, want to modify it a bit. Okay, so the tracker is going to be a match move. Now, the way you create an ellipse on here, and let me zoom in a little bit so I can you can see what we're doing. The way we create an ellipse Okay, let's first go to that first frame where it appears, which is frame 40. And you can see that the tracker uh, node is down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a background. Now I'm going to arbitrarily pick the background color to be red. So that's a background. And the background allows me to put the ellipse on to the foreground it may seem a bit confusing but now the background is black right now I don't want it black I'm gonna make it red and now obviously we don't want to cover the entire screen with just red so I take an ellipse and it's not a solid ellipse and now I have to make it a lot smaller. So I'm going to say something like 0.05 for the height and width. And that will bring it in. And I'm and uh, I also want it to be have a border width. I'm going to make it very small like a 05 even smaller than that. Maybe o o two five. Yeah, it's a nice thin little red e circle, and then I'm going to just put that right over where the original dot was. Easy. Okay. So to recap, create a background, make it the color you want, and then put an ellipse on into its mask, and. The only part of the background that will show up then will be that ellipse, and, el and we just make the ellipse a circle. And now you want to—I want to get it centered exquisitely well, so I'm going to 
make sure it's right on there and look at the media out yeah okay now I'm going to create another ellipse and I'm going to manually track with that so this ellipse is going to stay pretty much the same place and then I'm going to create a second ellipse same idea but said so instead of a tracker I'm just going to use what's called a merge node and a merge node is this thing so I'm going to basically merge the background in with the ellipse so I'm going to create another background now this one I'm going to give it a different color I'm going to create a background bring it over here bring that to the foreground of the merge node I think I'll go with the green one. Just crank the green. That's one easy way to do it. Now you can play around with the color. You can make it vertical, horizontal, gradient, four corner. I just need a solid one for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, put another ellipse over that. I'm going to... And I want the ellipse to not be solid. And I want it to not be enormous. Make it 04, shall we say? Try that. 04 and 04. It's good to have them different sizes because not everybody can see the colors. Okay. And border width can be the same 025. There, there. Yeah. And then you're going to move that right over the same point. Is just make sure these two circles are exquisitely lined up. So I'm this again, this is the first frame where the we can find the object. Actually, I believe it's frame 40. There we go. Very first frame where we see it. Let's get those two circles lined up. So I'm going to go to ellipse 1 and just nudge it just a little bit so it's much better and have a look that's pretty good okay now this red ellipse is just going to be in the way so I'm going to turn off its background by clicking on background one and then just going up here and switching it off temporary purely temporary okay ellipse two is what we want in ellipse 2, we're going to create keyframes every time we move it. We, have, we just have to, have to start out with the first keyframe. This will be the first one. That location for the center, X and Y. And then every time we move it, the software will automatically create a new keyframe. So what we have to do is just look for appearances of, the, of this little white dot. There it is. It's still pretty much in the middle of the circle. It's slightly off, but I'm going to let it go. And then keep going, just using the arrow key to step by it through. Okay, now it's, it's enough off that I think I want to adjust the circle just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm go to ellipse 2. And I'm going to move this just over there. That's pretty good. I could maybe tweak that up a little bit. You notice now we have a new keyframe over here for the center of, of, of the circle. Now, just keep going. Media out. See, it, it's not visible for a lot of frames. And then it puts in an appearance. Now, the only danger is it might appear behind the ellipse. If we're not sure of that, we can, you can turn off the background for the ellipse to... and just... You won't. You 
go back and forth using the arrow keys. There's one right there. Okay, let's turn on the background again. We want to slightly move that circle. So we'll move it there and check it. We'll tweak that just a little bit. Pretty good. And you'll notice we have a new keyframe over here with the center. Just keep going. You can, again, turn off the background for the ellipse if you're afraid of getting hidden underneath it. And just, oh, you see there it is, but it's almost in exactly the same place. And there it is again. We can check. It's still pretty good. All right. There it is again. Let's and so on. You see, you see the, how this pattern is going to work. Um, that's uh, pretty well centered. So we'll keep going. Turn the background off if you want. And. Every time you see it, you turn the background back on, check that it's well centered. And at this point, we're about a quarter of the way through the clip. Now, um, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because this pattern just repeats. You move every time you move the circle, you get a new keyframe. And if you go to ellipse here, you'll see these little white marks here are where a keyframe has been located. Now, sometimes you just want to make a keyframe because you haven't had one in a while even if the circle is still well positioned. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to go over here and click on that, make that a keyframe. And you just keep going like that. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing because, you know, it's kind of boring uh, watching me do this over and over again the same way. So I'll come meet you on the other side done and as you can see these little white marks are where all the keyframes are most of the appearances were right here in the middle around frame 370 380 and then it got there was a few more here and then it got sparser towards the end so let's look at that now let's bring up the uh bring up the background for ellipse one And now, since we don't see them before frame 40, let's set these backgrounds to only come in at frame 40. So double click into the background field there, the in time for both of them. Just save some confusion. And now let's play. You can see that the green circle is slowly separating from the red circle as it tracks the object. Now, of course, we are implicitly assuming that Every time we see a little flash, it's the same object. That's, that is an assumption. Notice that the red circle is kind of not being taken along with camera motion, whereas the green circle is, but it's also tracking the object. They're slowly separating. Now that's camera motion there, but when the object comes back, you'll see a more true representation of where it is. 
So it's a difference between the red and the green circle that is important. And so that, if we stop it back at near the end here, we'll see how much they've separated. And if you just go to the last keyframe, which is right here, that's what you can rely on. That difference here is how much it has moved from the first time we saw it in the frame. And since it's only looking at the difference, the camera motion is pretty much subtracted out. And that's the, uh, the way we did that. Now, what remains is to analyze exactly how much angle this is, but and keeping in mind that it, it may be moving away from the observer, so most of the motion might not be in this plane, but actually into the plane. It could even be moving toward the observer. We can't really be sure. It, with a little dot like that, you just can't tell if it's getting brighter or dimmer. So, but it, it does give us at least some analytical handle on what's going on. And that is how you do that.